Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Mike here at Game From Scratch and there is now a free version of the Pico 8 console available. And if you've never heard of Pico 8 before, it is probably the most popular fantasy console. If you've never heard of a fantasy console before, well, you're in for a treat. So what you see in front of you, this is Pico 8. It's sort of like an old retro 8-bit virtualized machine. This is a computer that was implemented entirely in hardware and the entire idea behind this is for you to do game development in a constrained environment. So let's start from the very beginning. We'll reboot our machine. And there you go. We have our virtual machine to work with. This is completely free. You can check it out yourself. I will show you how in just a bit. Uh, but we're going to go ahead, run the help. And you see here, we've got the option of installing some demos. So we're going to do that. Install demos like so. It's created a new folder called demos. We're going to switch into that folder. And now we are going to look at what's there. And we'll see a very simple example of a Pico 8 program right now. So let's go ahead and load uh, waves.p8 and type run. So you can see a Pico 8 program running. Now, if this was it, not really a lot of excitement going on here, but the entire idea behind Pico 8 and other virtual consoles is to get you playing and developing in a constrained environment. This is why you're focusing more on making things fun as opposed to making things that are complicated because it's a very self-contained and simple programming environment. So to check that environment out, hit the escape key, that brings up the console, hit again, and that brings up your development tools. And what you see here is the programming environment. This is actually the code that is drawing what we saw on screen. Now, one thing I don't like with virtual consoles is they also go retro with their fonts, and I hate working in retro fonts, personally. I find it very hard to read, uh, but here you can see this is the source code that caused what we just saw in action to run. Very straightforward and clean, but there's a lot more to this than just here. We've got a number of different editors that are self-contained within Pico 8 as well. Uh, the thing is, uh, this example is a bad one, so I'm going to clear the screen, CLS. I'm going to do a Dura again. And now let's look at uh, Collide. So let's load Collide.p8. Obviously, you could create your own uh, example from scratch. Uh, and we'll go ahead and run it. So here you can see a bit more of an involved example. So you've got 2D animation uh, and a tile map and everything else going on. Um, I'm not really sure what the premise is, but here you can hear you've got sound effects and everything else. So now let's go back, hit Escape twice, and we are in the editor. This here is the code. Um, for everything that we are working with uh, in this example. Uh, but what you'll notice is at the top here, so you can have multiple different tabs of code. So this is program 01, uh, but we could also go ahead and make zero, uh, so we can make program one, two, three, etc. But over here, we've got uh, this tool right here, which is a simple sprite editor. So our various different frames of animation, for example, are available here. So there are the different animations. Everything is index based. Uh, so you see here, this is sprite number 05. So you can access it in code by its index. So we've got basic tools here, stamping from the clipboard. We can select uh, flood fill, create basic shapes. You have a fixed color palette over here. Again, you're dealing with really constrained hardware here, and that is the intention. Next up, we also have this guy. So this is the sprite editor or tile editor. Over here, this is your level editor. And what you can do is basically start placing sprites in your world. And then you can load your world once again using uh, straight indexed versions. You've got um, full screen or tools available right here. Um, and then we've also got these guys right here. I don't know if there's anything going on. No, no example here. Uh, but there is a sound effect editor, which by the way, you can switch into this mode and actually start authoring. Uh, things directly here using various different notes and different uh, effects. And over here, we have a music generator. Uh, I'm not 100% remembering how to switch the soundtracks. Uh, and then over here, you've got the various different options there for it. And we've also got a sound effects generator available right here. So we'll go here and hear one of the sound effects. And let's go back over to here. We should see our sound effect like so. And you got control again over various different uh, generation methods. Uh, and yeah, that is essentially Pico 8 in a nutshell. You do have the ability to share these programs out. And the one we are looking at today, yeah, this is where I do that gotcha thing to you. This is running entirely inside of the browser. So that is kind of the limitation of the free version and also the strength. If you want to go ahead and check out Pico 8 development, all you got to do is go to pico-8-edu.com and it's a full version of Pico 8. It, the only difference is it is running 
in the browser. So if you want to learn a little bit more about that, well, we have this tweet here from uh, Lexolful. I don't know how you say that. We'll call it Zep. Uh, Zep here has said that Pico 8 Education Edition is out now. Uh, you basically head to that um, URL in your browser. And unfortunately, on mobile, it doesn't work with a, a soft or virtual keyboard. You need to have a physical keyboard attached or a Bluetooth keyboard of some form. Uh, so that's going to limit you to, you know, your phone isn't going to work unless you're using something like Samsung Dex or you have a keyboard attached. But if you have, um, you know, an iPad with a keyboard or a Chromebook or such, you should be able to do development directly in your browser on those. And of course, it works on uh, various different, uh, you know, desktop platforms as well. Uh, it is a web-based version of Pico 8 with a complete set of editing tools for schools, workshops, and anyone who likes to learn and make stuff. So if you've ever wanted to check out Pico 8 yourself, uh, this is as easy as it gets. It, again, it is very stripped down, and it, that is on purpose. So I actually covered Pico 8 uh, in the past. This was back in 2020. So you see some of the stats of what you're dealing with for this virtual machine. It has 128 by 128 with a 16 color palette. Uh, it has up to 32 kilo bytes of um, storage. Uh, that's where your game data and all your um, code and everything will exist. Uh, up to four channels of sound. You code using the Lua programming language. Uh, you can create up to 256 8x8 sprites, and you can have maps up to 128 by 32 cells in size. I did a hands-on video of that if you want to go ahead and check it out. Now, by the way, by no means is this the only fantasy console. Quite a while back, 2017, uh, I looked at some of the options out there, some of the more popular ones. Pico 8, again, is probably the most popular option out there. Uh, there's also Tick 80, Leco 12, Pixel Vision 8, which since then has become free. Uh, and then there's Nano Jammer uh, and a couple of other options out there. there. There's quite a few of these virtual consoles. And then a lot of times you also have like Raspberry Pi implementations that can run your games natively, which is kind of cool. So uh, if you are interested, there are a number of virtual consoles out there or fantasy consoles. The thing is, Pico 8 is probably the most popular of them. Now, you may be wondering, OK, well, if this is free, what is Pico 8 itself? Well, that is an application version of it. So if you want to check out the full fat version of Pico 8 or you want to support the author for doing so, um, um, Pico 8 is available. It's 15 bucks for Windows, Mac, Linux, and Raspberry Pi. Again, very limited in terms of the capabilities, but it has a full set of tools in there. You can share your cartridges out. I think there's, yeah, it's a special ping format that you send to another user and they can load and run your, your cartridges directly. Also, again, I believe there are some uh, support for making it run directly on Pi devices. Um, so that's actually kind of cool. Um, and yeah. That's, that's the whole idea behind Pico 8. So if you want to buy it and run it natively on a, those different uh, desktop platforms, you can purchase it for $15. Uh, but if you want to check it out yourself, basically just open up a browser, head on over to pico-8-edu.com, and you're off to the races. Now, I was actually born in the 8-bit generation, and there is a purity to these simple, um, simple coding experiences you know, exploration of things. You, you kind of do learn when you strip things down to the basics, especially if you're just starting out and you're trying to grasp concepts. Sometimes just making it as simple and streamlined as possible is as easy as you can get. The only challenge that you've got is that uh, I really hate editing code uh, in uh, this. Like, I, I find that extremely hard to read. I did when I was, you know, five back on an 8-bit micro, uh, and I, I do so now, by the way. So, any, by the way, anytime you hit... Um, Hit escape, brings you back to the command prompt. Uh, again, just type help and you get a list of the commands that are available there. Uh, again, escape to toggle back into the editor view. And yeah, that in a nutshell is Pico 8. If you ever screw anything up, just go ahead and do a reboot like so. And you're back to clean. You are working with temporary disks, by the way. You'll notice at the top left there, it says saving cartridges. It tells you how to back up and save your work and download it locally, because this is a web application. Um, so if you want to persist and save your work, do be sure to check out that saving cartridges link on the left-hand side. But that is Pico 8 educational version, completely free, kind of no strings attached, really. It just runs in a browser if you want to check it out. And if you want to pick up Pico 8, it is a $15 purchase, and it's a, just a great way to kind of get your feet wet with programming, uh, games, or just, you know, uh, have some fun. So that's it. Let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.